In this module, we'll discuss cervical spine x-rays. This includes AP and lateral views. Now, before you bring your patient into the room, make sure that you do as much preparation work as possible. You want to make sure that you input your patient demographics into your digital system, if that's what you're using. You want to set your mass and kilovoltage on the generator, whether that's just manual technique or you've got anatomical factors that you indicate. Also, you're going to want to align your film or your, your camera up with your upright chest bucky. A thing of note, you can do AP or front shots of the cervical spine on a table if you desire, but the problem with that is you are going to have to do the upright lateral x-ray, uh, cervical sp la uh, spine x-ray on an upright board because of the distance requirement. So doing it all upright at the chest board is optimal and much quicker. Now also you're going to want to line your tube up with your, uh, your bucky itself. That means vertically and horizontally. See here, if you have crosshairs, you'll have indicators on the collimator that will show you whether you're centered or not. You also want to open up your collimator light so that it accommodates the film size. Now, this is all notwithstanding. If you're using film, whether it be analog film or digital film, you always want to load that in. This is part of the prep work. Load it into the upright bucky so that you're ready to shoot your x-rays. This is a unique examination because we're using two different camera positions to acquire the images that we're looking for. First, which we'll cover, first we'll cover the AP uh, view, view of the cervical spine. This requires that you lower your camera and angle it upward toward the head 15 degrees. Now you're also at 40 inches. It's very easy to achieve the distance because you'll have locks. If you pull your camera back in your room, you'll feel a click that's actually a camera lock and it'll tell you when you're at 40 inches and it does the same thing at 72 inches. In cases where your, your tube is affixed and it doesn't move, these, don't, uh, these distances don't necessarily uh, apply to you. But in most cases, yes, you have this flexibility to angle your camera and acquire these distances. One thing of note, make sure that you always, always, if you are angling the camera ever, you must always recorrect it and center your, your crosshairs right back to the center of the film, the center of the bucky. Otherwise, you're going to have to do the film all over again because you don't want to throw your shadow completely off the, the bucky and the film. For our AP cervical spine, you want to be at 40 inches at the upright chest bucky that's with a grid typically included. This image here has a flaw to it. I'll explain that in just a minute. You might be able to identify it based on what I just told you with the uh, first slide, but you wanna center your crosshairs just above the patient's Adam's apple and just below the chin, right in that little space there where you see the darkening light. We are angling our tube 15 degrees. This says 15 to 20. I would stick to 15 degrees. Why? Because we're in a generation that watches a lot more TV and looks at their phones a lot more. So uh, the angle of their necks has gone down a little bit. Therefore, we're not seeing as many lordotic, hyperlordotic people out there. Um, also, uh, the, the, the flaw that I wanted to tell you about, you see this line right here? It goes straight through the patient and onto the board, well, we have a cassette in here inside this chest bucky. But look, that centering line looks like we're throwing the x-ray right off the x-ray film. I mean, the top of the film is about right here. So we're missing part of the film already. So if I were to advise this operator, I would tell them to raise that dot. See that centering point for your film? I would raise that up about six inches so that her entire film is include uh, image is included in on the x-ray film now this will help you understand why we're angling the cervical spine has a lordotic angle associated with it it angles forward i mean it kind of arches back closer to the top of the skull but most of the, the vertebra uh, section is angled downward so when you are angling upward, you are accommodating the vertebra, the angle of the vertebra, and those intervertebral spaces. Therefore, you get better visualization. 
a good baseline technique for this examination with these parameters is 10 mass at 75 kbp. Here's a good evaluation of a, uh, an AP examination. Notice we've got the left marker. We're looking at the front of the patient, so that's the patient's left side on your right-hand side. We can enumerate the uh, vertebra. Now, hopefully you understand uh, what the vertebra look like. They're the white, more whited areas, the bony looking areas. I can enumerate it from uh, one down to two. This has a little story to it. Uh, C2 is kind of a, a ring with a little thumb sticking up and C1 looks like a ring that fits down over the thumb. So that little dome right there is a very important part of the cervical spine. You wanna make sure you always include that. This is cutting it a little close right here. We do have specific exams to uh, be able to visualize that better, but to keep it simple, trust me, it's a very challenging image to acquire, so we're going to be doing AP and lateral views only. We're enumerating this, one, two, you see that, three, four, five, six, six has a little cr uh, strange shape to it, seven, Okay, and then this starts the uh, thoracic spine below it. But this will help you understand if you've got uh, a good examination or not. You've got all seven vertebrae included, and plus you can see the intervertebral spaces. Uh, this is funny. You can see these little uh, holes off to the side. These are articulate form. Uh, these are articulate surfaces. They're foramen that allow vessels to uh, blood vessels and nerves to travel in and out uh, to the spinal cord. Um, very uh, intense network involved here, but the primary reason I have these arrows is so that you can see the intervertebral spaces to evaluate your image, whether or not it's good or not. And keep in mind, you don't have to worry about this area, although I would include part of that rather than cutting it too close. You know, you don't want to go right there to right here. It's a too too tight in an image, so you want to go higher than the dens or this little dome here, and you also want to include in part of this image where, what, what this technologist did. They included all the way down to T4, so this is a good examination. Now for the lateral, lateral cervical spine, we pull our camera back to 72 inches at an upright chest bucky with a grid. and. So you'll know while we pull that camera back to 72 inches, look how much space is between the chest tube and the patient's head. That's because the, you, we can't avoid the shoulder being in the way. We've got to get him perfectly lateral. But the problem is this creates a little bit of a distortion. As you might guess, if we pulled the camera in, what that would do is re create some distorted angles. It would create a distorted spine that could be misleading. So we pull back that camera to 72 inches and that uh, gives us or optimizes our anatomy so that uh, it looks more appropriate. You want to center where you did before, close to where you did before, just above the Adam's ap apple and below the chin. And you want to include a space that's just above the ears and down to the shoulders, the tip of the shoulders. I'm going to outline it for you here. You can see about where you're trying to look when you're um, positioning the patient. Now they have to stand with their feet slightly apart and their shoulder touching the board. Do not let them lean on the board so that there's an angle that will dis further distort your cervical spine. Have them stand up straight and touch the board. And then one last thing, you wanna open your collimators up side to side to include the neck and have a little bit of room there, but not all the way. Especially if you have a digital system, your images get much cleaner if you're able to collimate close to the body part but not too much and not open your collimators up too much as well. A good baseline technique for this examination is 40 mass at 80 kvp. Now I know that is significantly more than the AP but remember we pulled that camera back nearly twice as far which uh, greatly uh, increases our need for more uh, mass and KVP to acquire an optimum image. Here's the anatomical position, uh, anatomical evaluation of your image. 
See how we can count down? It's much easier to count down from the side. We have that ring that I told you about, C1, and then C2, and the C2 has the dens that's sticking up. See that little dome? Remember that? We count down to C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. We can actually see beyond that, uh, starting off at the thoracic spine, I'm even seeing T1 and T2 going further down. Now, mind you, in many cases, you may not be able to see all the way down to C7, particularly in the uh, heavier population that we're having. There's ways to ameliorate that. What you can do is, number one, ha uh, increase your technique more. Number two, purchase some sandbags. Now, there are some radiographic sandbags that you can ask for from your local x-ray dealer, and they can provide that to you. They're very inexpensive, and all that involves is the patient standing exactly the way they were before, except now they're grabbing sandbags, they're relaxing their shoulders, and the sandbags pull the weight of the sandbag pulls those shoulders down so that you can get a, a better visualization of the lower part of the cervical spine. We've marked the image left, and we've centered. We want at least, in this case, we've centered at least above the ears. See that little ring there? That's the ear. We center above the ear, and then we made sure our collimator light is down there close to where the, the clavicle is. So this is indeed a good film. And that concludes our um, evaluation and uh, description of the cervical spine x-rays.